Good morning, Clay Chalkful. I'm Lauren Waters, and welcome to the second episode of the fourth season of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkful. This episode is all about national, global, and local current events. We start this episode off with Terry Jones and the sponsors of Heritage Panel here at CCHS with a conversation about racial injustice and what they are working on with students to combat racism. Terry? So when you say the pledge, the last three words are justice for all. But when you look around in the world today, is that really the case? So I sat down with Heritage Panel teachers, Mrs. Nance and Mrs. Finley, to see how their organization helps to combat this issue. Yes, my name is Clarissa Finley and I'm a co-sponsor for Heritage Panel. And I'm Catherine Nance, also a co-sponsor for Heritage Panel. Now can you explain to me what is Heritage Panel and what is it intended to do? So Heritage Panel is an organization that um, we kind of hold at school in conjunction with the YWCA of Greater Birmingham. And so the YWCA's mission is to um, empower women and eliminate racism. Um, that's kind of their mission statement. So we um, work with them to train students, and those are our heritage panelists, um, just to kind of like have meaningful dialogue about issues that they see happening in and around, like in their school and in their community. And it does allow for them to have like a safe place so that they can actually speak their minds without having judgment being cast on them um, about different things that may be happening, as she mentioned, within the school and also within the community. I feel as if it's important that they have this organization because I feel as if some students get lost in the midst of everything. Um, and what I mean by that is we have those students who kind of get looked over, things are happening to them, but you don't really know that things are happening to them whether it be racism, whether it be bullying, or whatever the case may be. And this allows for them to know that there's someone at the school who is an advocate for them. That's wonderful. We know that racism is a major issue. This year alone has had many examples of that. How does this organization tackle the topic of racism? So we're a very student-driven organization. Our students speak about their experiences and they go into other classrooms to share those experiences and kind of by doing that it allows, I think it makes other students feel comfortable to share in that session as well. And, um, and so I think that, again, because it's student-driven, this isn't something that we kind of push on them to talk about. It's something that they speak about because it's racism is something that a lot of our students experience both in school and out of school. And one of the things that we have done, with, especially with us being in the pandemic, is that we've still been allowing the, the students to still meet. And especially as you mentioned during this particular time, um, we have a lot more racism coming to the forefront. And so with us meeting um, virtually, they're still able to express their emotions and express you know, what's going on with them. Um, and so it still gives them that, that place, even though we can't physically be with them, to be able to express how they're feeling. Now, what impact do you feel and hope this organization will have on young people? I hope that this organization will impact young people in such a way that they know that it's okay to speak out. Um, mm -hmm. That if they're going through something, that they don't have to internalize it and think that, hey, I'm the only one going through this particular situation. Understanding that there are more people who are there. And even if everyone doesn't have the exact same story, there are people there who understand and who want to be there for them to provide support and encouragement. So just having an impact to say, hey, it's okay to speak out. You don't have to suffer alone. You don't have to go through this alone. There are people there for you. Well, thank you so much for telling me about your organization and your perspectives on these issues. Thanks, Terry. Well, I believe that this is a great organization and that steps like these are needed in making a change in society in order to reach what every human being deserves justice. We're so thankful for teachers like Mrs. Nance and Miss Finley for caring so much about our students. As we all know, this school year has looked unlike any other school year we've ever experienced. We know how school has changed for us, but how has it changed for teachers? Let's find out. Hey Clay Chalkwell, this is Jillian Johnson with CCN TV and today I decided to do a couple of interviews with two of our teachers to see what are their thoughts on the new changes in their classroom due to COVID. We all know how COVID has affected us, but we don't really know how it's affected our teachers. Let's see what they have to say. 
My name is Miss Baker and I teach advertising design here at Clay Chalkwell High School and this is my 16th year here at the school. Um, hey y'all, it's Mr. Powell. Um, I've been teaching here at Clay Chalkwell since 2009, so that's putting us, what, around 11 years or so. Um, overall, I've been teaching for about 13, 14 years. The biggest change is having to space my students out. Um, the extra cleaning, the extra constant mask on your face, it's, 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 a, it's a lot to adjust to. I would say finding the time to um, help both groups of students and then knowing also that my students at home are going to be missing out on some of the hands-on projects. In person you have the benefit of reading body language and seeing expressions, how people are reacting to what you're saying and virtually it's basically just like talking to a wall. It's very hard to get that same type of feedback just staring at a screen. My classroom, I have them kind of staggered out so they kind of skip desk and then the next class they sit in the other desk. Um, try and keep those clean as much as possible. Germex all around the room. Uh, myself, I, you know, mask on at all times, washing my hands when I can just those general type things. Um, I think that um, teachers have definitely stepped up to the plate and gone above and beyond um, what we normally would do and have to do. Um, and I've realized that we do adapt to change well and that we, um, with, with a lot of collaboration between the faculty, we can make it a successful year. Thank you so much to our teachers who have been working so hard to keep us safe and for abiding by the CDC guidelines. While there are many students who have returned to traditional learning, there are many that have been learning from home since August. Let's take a look into the differences between each style of learning with Julia Petty in traditional and remote student Adriana Colvin. A few weeks ago, me and my fellow classmates had to make the decision of whether to go online or in person when we came back to school. So Adrienne and I decided to make a video showing the difference between online and in-person learning and why we chose what we chose. I get up at 8.50 every day. My first class starts at 9.25, so I like to have at least 30 minutes to get ready and open my computer. I go downstairs and sit on the couch. I then open WebEx and get on my first call of the day, which is economics and government. Being at home is very different from being in school because I'm at home surrounded by my dog instead of surrounded by my classmates. The teachers do an amazing job of balancing both online and in-person students so that we get the material needed to succeed. My school day is very different now due to the coronavirus. I don't really see any of my classmates and if I do, it's only online. I chose online because I feel I do better online than in-person. I've decided to take dual enrollment classes through the University of Alabama and they are online. I have been used to online classes since I started taking them in April. I'm also a cheerleader at my school and I don't want to risk getting COVID and having to miss games because of it. I think I made the right decision for myself this semester, but I think I will be doing in-person next semester. My day starts about 6 a.m. We have to be in school at 7.45. And so I get up at six to make sure I have time to get ready and get to school with no rush. Um, our first class starts at 8.05 and it's homeroom. And then the rest of our day is pretty much the same in terms of like times and schedules. We haven't changed anything since last year. Um, one of the main differences at school besides wearing masks are that all of our hallways are one ways now. And in most of my classes, actually all of them, we sit at least one or two desks away from each other and we're all facing the same direction. I chose in-person learning because I really struggled with accountability when we were online, like going to class and getting my work done when I didn't have someone there like telling me I had to do it. Also, when I was doing online school, I'd get very distracted easily. And so I would just be watching my TV and not really paying attention to class. So being in person has really helped me a lot and my grades have already increased a lot from being online. There's Germex and Clorox wipes everywhere at our school. So I really feel safe being back there and our teachers and administrators do a really good job of making sure that everyone's following the rules and wearing their masks the right way. So I really feel safe when I'm at school. Whether you chose online or in person, we hope you're learning a lot and staying safe. Now we're gonna hand it back to Lauren. Learning in a pandemic is quite difficult, as we all know, but staying safe while playing sports? What is that like? Michaela, fill us in. Hi, Clay Chalvin, this is Michaela Dillard with CCN TV, and I'm here to talk to a few seniors about how COVID has impacted their senior year. 
Take a look. Um, COVID-19 has impacted our senior year because it's October and this is like our first full week back in school. So it's different. We're used to doing it online and now we're back in school and classes in person. It impacted my senior year because we got to wear masks and we can't do a lot of senior stuff like senior skip day, all that senior stuff. Um, our season went, um, it was a little different because the benches weren't beside each other and we had to wear masks on the court or at least like have them around our face and stuff like that. But other than that, we were grateful that we were still able to play the full season unlike other schools and other places that didn't have the opportunity to play. COVID gonna affect our season because we can't have jump ball and we can't have our, we can't run out in the beginning of the game. The pro is they're not looking at our ACT scores because that's the hardest thing about trying to find a college. And the con is we can't participate in senior activities. We can't like, you know, we don't even know when or if we're going to have prom and like little stuff like that. So that's definitely a con. You don't know what's really, it's like everything's up in the air. You don't know what's really going to happen. A con is we gotta wear masks and we gotta walk one way in the hallway, take forever to get to class. And they want you to social distance a lot. And lunch is different. Sports is different. School is different. Life is different. Uh, I think COVID's gonna impact my decisions, but I think it's gonna make me stay a little closer to home. So I know like who I'm around and like, because I, you can't stay at college forever. You gotta come back home eventually. And I don't wanna like affect my parents and my grandparents. So it's gonna make me wanna stay close to the house instead of going too far away where it could, I could possibly be in a hot spot for it. COVID gonna affect my college decisions because college gave the seniors another year in college. So it's gonna affect the recruiting for basketball. It's gonna make it harder. But I still got my one-way ticket. Yes, sir. <laughs> Speaking of sports, let's see the recap of last week's exciting homecoming. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkful. This has been Lauren Waters with CCN TV. Have a great day, CCHS.